Good afternoon to all who have joined online for the clinical meeting organized by the Sri Lanka Medical Association in collaboration with the uh, professional colleges. And in this time, it would be with the College, college of Dermatologists. Uh, as, as a physician who had done the MD in exam, I know that how important for us the scheme was for evaluation of systemic pathologies. Uh, today, it would be the evaluation of skin with regards to HIV infection, which would be a very important topic for dermatologists as well as the specialists in sexually transmitted diseases as well as for general physician. Uh, on behalf of the Sri Lanka uh, Medical Association, I uh, thank very much for the College of Dermatologists for organizing this uh, uh, program, as well as Dr. Achala Balasuriya, uh, who lies with other colleges on behalf of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, so the speaker for today is Dr. Swarna Desanayake, consultant dermatologist, National Hospital, Kandy. Uh, with the technology available, the Kandy hasn't become far, uh, so that uh, uh, it had become possible for us to be uh, get the services of all the resource persons, all uh, the capable resource persons uh, for the benefit of the uh, junior doctors as well as postgraduate doctors, as well as other trainees. So I'm very thankful to Dr. Swarna Desanayake for accepting the invitation and uh, deciding to spend her time on um, this important activity of uh, uh, educating the professionals, the doctors. Um, and she would be talking to us on HIV and the skin today. And also uh, will be followed by her team, uh, the Dr. Sashika Chandrarathna, Senior Registrar in Dermatology uh, National Hospital Kandy. And there would be MCQ presentations by Dr. Lalindra Karnaratna, Registrar in Dermatology, National Hospital Kandy, and Dr. Chiranjaya Ekanayak, Registrar in Dermatology, National Hospital Kandy. So while I welcome all of them, as well as the audience for this uh, clinical meeting, let me uh, invite Dr. Sarna Desanayak, Consultant Dermatologist, to make a presentation. And Dr. Swarna, over to you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Shashika Chandrathna, Senior Registrar in Dermatology attached to uh, National Hospital Candy. So I'll be discussing a few uh, cutaneous manifestations of HIV. So I hope that uh, it will uplift your ability to detect cutaneous manifestations related to HIV. There are several uh, cutaneous manifestations of HIV, including pleuritic papillary eruption, seroconversion rash, seborrheic dermatitis, and few uh, primary skin diseases like uh, psoriasis, petrasi fibrocularis with uh, exacerbation, and uh, with uh, several drug reactions and tumor. So these topics will be discussed in detail uh, by Dr. Swarna Sanayaka, consultant dermatologist at National, National Hospital Candy. And I'll be discussing a few cases. The first case, I will be discussing a 46 years old male, a retired army soldier uh, who had bisexual high risk behavior, presented to us with protic papules over lower limb for eight years duration. And uh, it was treated initially as lichen planus at local hospital, and uh, it was gradually extended to trunk and upper limb. He noted an exaggerated insect bite response. And he has a few histories of uh, dermatological clinic visits, photosensitivity, and uh, skin lesions involving face and upper lip. He complained of significant weight loss, but uh, he doesn't have any uh, history of pyrexial episodes, no previous hospital admission, or history of recurrent infections. And he doesn't have any other comorbidities. On examination, he is uh, mild pale, no significant lymphadenopathy. He had pigmented papules and plaques fundamentally over extremities. A few erosions over the lesion, no mucosal lesions, and uh, scalp and palm part and skin were normal. Systemic examination was non significant. So you can appreciate few uh, pigmented papules and few uh, pigmented uh, 
lesions with previous lesion. So there are multiple uh, pigmented papules involving upper lip, trunk, and you can appreciate few necrotic papules. So in a patient uh, coming with uh, pigmented uh, necrotic papules involving extremities, we have to suspect papular urticaria, lichenoid eruption like lichen planus. Inflammatory papillosis, a rare variant of percutaneous T cell lymphoma, pruritic papular eruption in HIV. So, we proceeded with the skin biopsy, which was uh, non significant with uh, negative features for mycobacterium tuberculosis, fungal infection, as well as for cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So, with the background history of high risk sexual behavior and uh, classic clinical presentation of Prolific lesions involving extremities. We have proceeded with serology for HIV infection, which was positive with CD for count of 54 per cubic millimeter. So we have confirmed prolific papular eruption in HIV with the uh, possibility of exaggerated papular urticaria. Now the patient symptoms were settling with supportive treatment and topical steroids. So, second case, uh, I am discussing in the same patient who presented with chloritic papular eruption. So, this is the first blood count. count. So he had a mild thrombocytopenia of 82,000 with uh, WBC 5.2, neutrophil count 62% with uh, hemoglobin 10.1. As a protocol, we should uh, investigate for mycobacterium tuberculosis before starting antiretroviral treatment. So with that investigation, uh, he was positive for one to examination as well as few findings in the check six ray. So he was uh, treated with started with antitubercular medication with clinical suspicion of active pulmonary tuberculosis. And botrymoxal prophylaxis has been started with uh, for neuromycetic gerivalsy infection. And uh, repeated blood blood count after this medication, thrombocytopenia below 20,000. With affecting other cell lines, WBC has gone down 2.7, hemoglobin gone down to 5.5 grams per deciliter. So we have stopped botrymoxol and rifampicin with suspicion of drug induced thrombocytopenia. Even after withdrawal of uh, those drugs, we had a resistant thrombocytopenia below 10,000, which was not responding for IV immunoglobin as well as for repeated platelet transfusion. Blood picture and bone marrow examination revealed marrow suppression up due to HIV infection and drug. There were no evidence for malignancy, mild dysplastic syndrome or HLH. So we have started him on l thrombopoietin a thrombopoietin receptor agonist after hematology opinion. So after starting l thrombopac uh, five days from the duct, he developed Ethymatous maculopapular skin lesion over the trunk with no mucosal lesions, and we couldn't appreciate any targeted lesions or necrotic skin patches. He doesn't have facial or peripheral edema, and at that time, the first sign was negative. But patient complained a burning sensation of skin, and he had severe skin tenderness. So, this is the initial maculopapular skin lesion involving the chest. In second day, he got a skin lesion, similar skin involvement in the back. So these are our differential diagnosis: immune reconstitution, inflammatory syndrome due to mycobacterium uh, antitubercular medication, maculopapular drug eruption, reappearance of chloritic papular eruption, and is it uh, toxic epidermal necrosis or overlap with uh, toxic epidermal necrosis with uh, Steven Johnson syndrome, or is it uh, Staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome. He had a marked skin tenderness, and they were triggering multiple medications. And there is a predisposition to toxic epidermal necrosis by HIV infection. So we suspect clinically toxic epidermal necrosis. So what what is the culprit for the toxic epidermal necrosis? He was on l pack day five, ofloxacin day fifteen. And he was on INH, pyridoxine, pyrcinamide, day 20. And you can see day 20, but uh, we have stopped it 15 days back due to thrombocytopenia. And he was on 4 time day 37, 
but we have stopped 15 days back. Even though uh, antiretroviral treatment is a uh, common culprit for skin, it was not started in this patient. So we suspect uh, we have started treatment with clinical suspicion for toxic epidermal necrosis. So scoring a prognostic tool assessment revealed score one uh, with mortality less than 5%. And L-tropomabac, antitubiculous medications and non-essential medications were withheld. And we have given IV hemoglobin. And we adhere to reverse barrier nursing and strict maintenance of input and output. Special skin care was delivered with uh, anti shear handling. And we adhere to eye, uh, special care for eye and other mucosal uh, area. And uh, we monitored him for uh, infection and added the gastroprotective medication, but we couldn't add the DVT prophylaxis due to concurrent cytopenia. So this is the picture showing positive Nikos sign in day four. And he had uh, several uh, dusky erythematous skin lesions involving more than 30% uh, of body surface area with uh, several uh, full thickness epidermal detachment in her back in his back and trunk and uh, over the extremities. So he got mucosal lesions in all in glands, penis and heart palate in day six. So this is uh, his picture after recovery, after three weeks of uh, treatment. So why we suspect l and porfloxacin as the culprit drugs? The lag period of five days for l and lag period of 15 days for porfloxacin all other drugs were started three weeks before the onset of initial skin lesion. So lag period for toxic epidermal necrosis is in between four days to 21 days. It can be less than two days and it can be long as 28 days. So identification of culprit drug and withdrawal of that is the main uh, target in our treatment for toxic epidermal necrosis. So why? Uh, we took decision to start antiretroviral treatments with the background information of antiretroviral treatment can uh, give rise to toxic epidermal necrosis. So there are two reasons. Uh, first one is HIV propagation itself can potentially worsen toxic epidermal necrosis due to low CD4 count and further deterioration of cytopenia with HIV will give a poor outcome in toxic epidermal necrosis. So we are, at the moment, we are continuing antiretroviral treatment and we are introducing antitubiculous medications with an alternative for ofloxacin. And uh, we are adding new drugs with minimally with the three week interval. So I have selected my third case, a different uh, cutaneous presentation of HIV. So she's a 68 year old lady, a housewife from Polonarua and wife of a farmer with multiple sexual partners. And she has had a history of scaling erythema for two years, initially involving head and neck area with gradual involvement of other parts of the body. She complained severe pruritus and burning sensation of skin, which was not responding to topical treatment as well as systemic treatment. And she had a past history of suggestion of hydrogenized suppurativa with no other form of disease and she was not on any long-term medication, and she has not taken any ayurvedic medication or over-the-counter medication. On examination, she was not pale with no significant lymphadenopathy, but she had oral mucosal lesions such as candidiasis. And she had waxy orange color palm plant ketoderma, which is typical for vitracid to papillary. And she had a scalp erythema with fine diffuse scaling. So you can appreciate generalized erythema of the skin, few erosions over the trunk, and uh, severe scaling involving face, trunk, extremities, and typical waxy orange color palm pantechetoderma for petrasis suprapitalis. And she had uh, erythematous scaly plaques with islands of spared skin among pink scaly plaques. There were no significant nail changes, such as psoriasis, but uh, she had follicular papules of extremities, but there were no uh, 
feminism of nutmeg beta which is uh, typical for pitrasis to capillaries and she doesn't have any uh, acute uh, lesion size of hydrogenatic suppurativa and systemic examination was normal so clinically we diagnosed pitrasis to capillaries and uh, biopsy was confirmed with no uh, evidence for psoriasis and uh, on revealing her clinical records we detected that the uh, patient was resistant for systemic treatment and she was being frequently being added to her meds so this is the classification for pitrasis tuberculosis pitrasis tuberculosis type 1 is classic adult onset and similar presentation we can see with the type 6 associated with hiv infection so with the background history of uh, her husband having multiple sexual partners and uh, recasten resistant pitrasis tuberculosis we have proceeded with hiv serology so hiv infection was confirmed and uh, with uh, diagnosis of pitrasis tuberculosis type 6 so we have given topical emollients ketolytics oral acetretin and we are continuing antiretroviral treatment so we have achieved near complete resolution after 12 weeks of treatment so this is the back and the palm plant and skin with uh, no skin lesions at the moment so this uh, brings uh, to my end of my presentation and i'd like to thank sri lanka medical association for giving me this valuable opportunity thank you thank you very much dr sashikar uh, and i think that must uh, would be followed by dr swarnathi sana i think maybe maybe that swarna could take over yeah. thank you so much everybody thank you very much for the kind words of introduction again i would like to thank organizers of sma for inviting us to conduct this monthly program All right, now it's fine. Infective viral illness predominantly transmitted through sexual mode. It is rather serious illness because um, it can be transmitted to one another and to date it doesn't have a cure, leading to significant health burden. In contrast to other diseases, HIV does not have characteristic clinical features. badly impairs host defense mechanism involving different tissues and different uh, organ in the body including skin so it is better for you to be aware and be confident um, in management of diagnosing early diagnosis and management of hiv by knowing these cutaneous manifestations of hiv in this lecture i'll go i'm trying to answer these following questions the first one is what is the relationship between hiv and skin and how strong it is and why it is important to recognize these the manifestations the second question is what are the categories of cutaneous manifestations and common condition of these categories the third one is the what is the prevalence and type of cutaneous drug eruptions in hiv i'll go on to the first question the relationship between hiv and the skin the cutaneous manifestation uh, manifestations are very common in patient with hiv leading to significant morbidity mortality stigmatization with reduced quality of life it is estimated that more than 90% of patients experience at least one kind of a skin or mucous membrane disease throughout the course of illness this cutaneous manifestation can act as a sensitive and useful indicator of immune state of the patient while it can be a in the subject to initial diagnosis of the disease in the setting of antiretroviral therapy hiv has become a chronic illness like diabetes so these people live longer we could happen to see the modified or diverse manifestation of these illness african countries are 
home to largest number of HIV infected individuals, including children and adults. India and China have the highest burden in Asia. Luckily, in Sri Lanka, we have uh, a low prevalence in disease. It is less than 0.1%. If I recollect the memory regarding the pathogenesis and the, the, the life cycle of this virus, first of all, the viral virus is bind to CD4 lymphocyte. Then fusion will take place and release of the genetic material to the CD4 lymphocytes with the help of reverse transcriptase, DNA is synthesis. This DNA is integrated into host genome and subsequent replication and formation of new daughter cells will take place. This new daughter cell again infect the new CD4 lymphocytes. This overall process weakens immune system by reducing the qualitative as well as quantitative number of CD4 lymphocytes. The natural history of this disease varies significantly due to cost factors like genetic factors and the viral factors like the initial viral load and type of virus. Therefore, we have slow, slow progressors, intermediate progressors, or rapid progressors. Most of the patients are in intermediate group, and the median time to progress from HIV to AIDS in this group is 10 years. HIV-related skin conditions have a wider spectrum. This spectrum further depends on Immunological state, as reflected by CD4 count, the concurrent use of antiretroviral therapy, and pattern of endemic infection. In general, decline in immunity is associated with increased number and severity of the condition. So, these, with these characteristics, the diagnosis of cutaneous manifestation of HIV is extremely challenging because as I told you, it has a wider spectrum and also it doesn't have a unique clinical features. Usually these manifestations represent most commonly a common illness, which is severe in nature or atypical in nature or recurrent in nature. Furthermore, the morphology of same illness differs when CD lymphocytes reduce. In this picture, you can appreciate uh, the HSV infection. In immunocompetent HIV individual or stage one, it is the morphology more or less similar to the general population. The morphology has completely changed when it is in stage four. So it is better for clinicians to be alert about this presentation to, to diagnose this condition early. In addition, there are some clinical clues in these some clinical situations where you need to think about possibility of HIV infection. For example, the unusual skin eruptions like Kaposi sarcoma or oral hairy leukopenia. If you see these kind of lesions, um, the HIV status should be excluded irrespective of the other uh, the clinical conditions. When patients have sudden exacerbation of in the psoriasis, like diseases like psoriasis, again, we have to think about uh, the possibility of HIV, provided that disease is being treated uh, adequately. The another situation is treatment failures. The best example is the refractory dermatophytes infection. Again, provided that the adequate dose, appropriate drug, and adequate duration. Um, the treatment is provided. The other one, Dr. Chandratna discussed a case scenario, a patient with pitrisis from blood pillage. She came all the way from uh, Polonna River to Kandy because she was not happy about the, the control of her disease. So uh, the, we went through the clinical notes and how to have the current exacerbation, although she was treated with optimally at home. So 
we checked her HIV status with the history and found to have um, the positive for HIV. The another clinical scenario is skin diseases with exaggerated presentations. The best example is seborrheic dermatitis. As we all know that seborrheic dermatitis is a common illness and usually milder in nature and very well respond to treatment. However, if it is severe in nature and recurrent and when the clinical manifestations are in inverse pattern, again, we have to think about the possibility of HIV. So why it is important for the clinicians to be aware about these, the clinical manifestation, what is the significance of these things in as far as the diagnosis and management concern? These manifestations can be one of the most, it has a diagnostic value as it, those can be an initial presentation of the disease and lead to subsequent diagnosis. It acts as an immunological marker too. That it gives immunological indicator of the, can become indicator of the disease as well as patient. Also, it gives a prognostic value as well. The, for example, presence of cytomegalovirus infection in HIV individuals indicate, indicates rapid progression of the disease or a poor prognosis. So let's move on to the second question. What are the categories of cutaneous manifestations and common cutaneous conditions? These, the manifestations can be categorized into three groups. Primary HIV skin rash that can be seen usually in acute zero conversion stage. And the second group is opportunistic disorders due to immunosuppression, for example, infection, inflammatory disease and drug reductions. Those can be mobile form drug reductions. The most of the, the disorders are in this opportunistic disorder category. Let's move on to the primary HIV skin rash. This could be seen in acute seroconversion syndrome. The acute seroconversion syndrome can be seen usually one to eight weeks after getting infection. About two thirds of, two third to one, half of the patient could have symptoms, develop symptoms, which is non-specific flow-like illness, more or less similar to infectious mononucleosis. About 50% of them experience a rash. The typical rash is, the generalized macular papular erythematous exanthem, can you appreciate in this picture? Usually, uh, the predominant in upper part of the body, including face, neck, trunk, upper limbs, involving palm and sores. In addition, they can have exanthem like mouth ulcers, genital ulcers. <clears throat> Another uncommon manifestation of the uh, the rash is the skin pictrasis rosia like lesion and skin colored necrotic papules. This condition is short lasting and only lasts about less than one week and it is self limited. So it can be missed easily and ignored by clinicians because the ignored by the patient because the patients, about half of the patients are asymptomatic. So the clinician, neither clinician nor patient doesn't aware about the condition. The, again, the, this, the condition, primary seroconversion stage, the skin rash is highly non-specific and it represents common illness. Again, can become unnoticed by clinicians and it can be mild or severe in nature. So the, if it is mild, patients also ignores it. And again, it is transient, short lasting and self-limiting. So the patient is not bothered about it and sometimes clinicians also might not be bothered about it. So 
it can be missed easily if you if if you are vigilant enough to catch at this stage the patient the, can be treated and function can be altered and disease transmission also can be reduced let's move on to the skin conditions due to immunosuppression we have a broad group including infective lesions, inflammatory lesions, and neoplastic lesions. These, the morphological, the spec, morphological spectrum of these categories are highly correlated to the number of CD counting the patient. For example, if patient is immunocompetent, they can have the for example, it is more than 500, they can have viral infections, bacterial infection, and fungal infections like vaginal candidiasis or agarinopathy. But carcinoma are very common, if at all, Kaposi sarcoma can be seen. The commonest inflammatory dermatosis is seborrheic dermatitis. When immunity further goes down, the spectrum of the infection getting wider and inflammatory lesions also getting wider and the neoplastic lesions are somewhat uncommon at this stage too. The viral infections like herpes simplex virus infection, bacterial infections like mycobacterial infection, along with uh, the pathogenic bacterial infection, fungal infection at this stage, oral candidiasis can be seen. It is recurrent in nature. The inflammatory lesions like the seborrheic dermatitis the commonest one, refractory psoriasis, papillopurine eruptions in HIV, eosinophilic folliculitis can be seen. When patient is in advanced age, if in the 3D4 count less than 200, the atypical infections as well as opportunistic infections can be seen. The disseminated chronic HSV, varicella zoster virus infections, molluscum infections can be seen. The viral, in, the fungal infections uh, like penicillosis cryptococcus, atypical mycobacterial bacterial infection can be seen, and uh, the inflammatory dermatosis. The uh, spectrum is more or less similar to the previous group, but the, these dermatoses are the are refractory to treatment. At this stage, the neoplastic lesions are very common. The most commonest lesion is uh, the severe Kaposi sarcoma and lymph. Let's move on to some pictures of these patients. When patient is in a stage one, the, you can see the picture of ectima in petigo. This morphology is more or less similar to the general population, but the condition is in recurrent nature. The vaginal candidiasis, again, it is the morphology is similar to the general population, but it is recurrent in it. Seborrheic dermatitis, it is, mm, uh, the, again, it is similar to the uh, ordinary people. And oral hair lymphoplakia can be seen at date. It can be seen as whitish corrugated papule, which is asymptomatic and located in the lateral aspect of the tongue. Any immunity pro, mm, the, goes down, the HSV infection um, can become hemorrhagic, the extensive deep-seated infection, and uh, the herpes zoster can become multidermatoma, severe in nature, and it can become varicose in morphology too. The Kaposi sarcoma can become multifocal. Another important viral infection is human papilloma virus. That can be seen in genital, extragenital area. The, these lesions are profuse, and these le le the lesions merge together to form a mosaic of the treatment resistant lesions. When immunity further goes down, these the lesions, viral wards can be seen in genital area. The, perianal warts and in the oral cavity. There is a high tendency to become these lesions malignant or neoplastic when the immunity goes down. 
HSV infection, the B simplex viral infection, can become the chronic non healing ulcers. Here, the chronic non healing you know, the keratotic ulcers. The candida infection, many oral candidiasis is very common, extensive, recurrent in nature, and can even extend to esophagus, leading to dysphagia. When immunity further goes down, the herpes zoster become disseminated and necrotic in nature and leading to chronic non-healing ulcer. The, another bacterial infection common in advanced stages bacterial angiomatosis that can be that can be presented as violaceous colored or purplish colored papule. The another opportunistic infections like cryptococcus penicilliosis can be seen. The molluscum contagioso, it is a viral infection and it has relatively uh, the characteristic features in uh, HIV associated conditions. And these lesions are the extragenital lesions mainly confined to face and concentrated around eyes. And these lesions are giant lesions. Let's move on to the inflammatory HIV related skin conditions or papular scaly lesions. HIV predisposes to various papular squamous lesions. The commonest one is seborrheic dermatitis. The some of the psoriasis, eosinophilic folliculitis are some of them. This, this picture pictures appreciate the psoriatic lesions, which are extensive treatment, the resistant treatment, and getting uh, the erythrodermic. A few words about Pectriasis rubrocularis, which is HIV related. The Pectriasis rubrocularis is a rare, the papillosquary disorder, papillosquamous disorder with unknown etiology. It can be presented as multiple papular plaque lesions. There are islands of sparing normal skin. You can appreciate this picture. This is the close up view. Uh, these lesions have cephalochoral distribution and associated with palm plant keratoderma with yellowish in on the palms. And the nail dystrophies can be seen. In contrast to classic pictosis rubrocularis, HIV associated uh, pictosis rubrocularis associated with acne conglobata, high adenitis suppurativa, like our patient did. This can be perceived or follow the, diagnose, follow the diagnosis of HIV. These people sometimes have poor response, about 50%, and some have a very good response to antiretroviral therapy along with ordinary the, the treatment, like our patient did. Another common inflammatory dermatosis, dermatosis is papillopruritic eruptions of HIV. This condition can be seen in patient in tropics, it is as high as 50%, can manifest as chronic recurrent bilateral symmetrical pruritic papules and pustules starting from lower volumes and extended to hand and trunk with unknown etiology thought to be exaggerated immune response to arthropods antigen. This condition can be seen at common, commonly seen with advanced stage, and it could be initial presentation of the disease like in our patient. There are lots of differential diagnoses that, that those can be follicular origin, non-follicular origin, non-follicular origin, origin Lesions like a scaly specular carrier follicular origin, like pectrisis, pectrisiform follicular. I'm sure everybody, everybody is aware of that. But that look, we have, we do see lots of people with these uh, papillopruritic eruptions in day to day practice. So you need high degree of suspicion to diagnose this condition because it is so common and it might get unnoticed and might miss easily. 
in literature too, the, there are uh, the case reports which exactly similar to the our case as the, the pruritic papular eruptions as presenting illness of HIV, which was published in 2011, Indian Journal of Sexually Transmitted Disease. The other one is eosinophilic folliculitis of HIV. It is a severe, severely pruritic uh, the eruption in HIV can be seen um, in advanced stage of disease. It should be less than 300 CD for lymphocytes. It presents as group follicular um, pustules starting from trunk and can spread to face. In contrast to papular pruritic eruptions in HIV, these lesions have central distribution. There are many therapies available for, to treat these patients. However, none is uniformly effective apart from antiretroviral therapy. Let's move on to the neoplastic lesions in HIV due to immunosuppression. Lots of neoplastic lesions can be seen among them. Kaposi sarcoma is very common. These lesions can be commonly seen in advanced stage and the Kaposi sarcoma can be seen in mucosal the, as a mucosal lesion as well as normal skin and the lymphoma again very common that can be non-Hodgkin, Hodgkin lymphoma and lymphoma is caused by bacterial infections. Squamous cell carcinoma and invasive cervical carcinoma are very common in HIV patients. In literature, um, there are so many studies regarding these uh, the cutaneous manifestation. One study published in uh, Pediatric Infectious Disease Journal in 2010. The study was mucocutaneous manifestation in HIV patients, their relationship to CD4 lymphocytes count. Study concluded cutaneous manifestations are common in HIV positive patients, some of which could be applicable as useful clinical indicators to predict immune status of the patient. Another study the dermatological manifestations in <clears throat> HIV infected patients, the morphological spectrum with CD correlation. This study was in <clears throat> Indian Journal of Sexually Transmitted Disease in 2013. This study concluded that CD4 counts below 200 were associated with maximum infection, infectious lesion. Whereas the CD4 count more than 350 shows more non-infected or inflammatory type lesions. In this study, most common infectious lesion was Hodgkin's contagiosa. In this study, the most common non-infectious or inflammatory lesion was papillopuritic eruptions in HIV. Let's move on to the last question. The, what is the prevalence and type of cutaneous drug reactions in HIV? There is a significant reduction in global mortality with introduction of antiretroviral therapy. Unfortunately, the incidence of cutaneous drug eruptions <clears throat> has increased dramatically. It is as high as 100 times. There are lots of risk factors to get cutaneous drug reaction in these patients. The, among them, Irish or immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, polypharmacy and reduce CD4 lymphocytes are um, some of them. The few points about antiretroviral therapy, these the drugs target to reduce the, the synthesis of the viral particles. So the most commonly used drugs are highlighted here. The reverse transcriptase inhibitors like nevirapine, <coughs> Efavirenz and protease inhibitors like lopinavir. These drugs are used in combination because um, the, to reduce the emergence of resistance. There is changes in prevalence of HIV-associated cutaneous disorders after introduction of antiretroviral therapy. The most of the diseases <laughs> like herpes zoster virus, cytomegalovirus has increased in frequency apart from other infections which have reduced in prevalence. 
The inflammatory disorders also have reduced inhibitors. The cutaneous drug eruptions have increased inhibitors. What are the common drugs causing uh, these reactions? Antiretroviral drugs, which are used in combination, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, penicillin group drugs, and anti TB drugs. These drugs are commonly used in HIV patients. The adverse drug reactions can be mild and self-limiting to life-threatening, like toxic epidermal necrosis, like our patient had. Commonest, commonest eruption is mobiliform drug eruption. You can appreciate in this picture. Other types of eruptions are the erythema multiform. You can see the, the typical lesion at close-up view with three zones. Fixed drug eruption here to meet the cyclomethoxazole. And um, this picture shows the mobiliform drug eruptions to mimicry. Before I conclude, a few words about immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome. It is an immune mediated form of infl inflammation directed against antigens, usually microorganisms or drugs. With introduction of antiretroviral therapy, there is a surge of CD4 lymphocytes. In contrast, there is a reduction, dramatic reduction, reduction in viral load. So these increased CD4 lymphocytes detect hidden pathogens which were ignored with deficiency of immunity previously. So this can be clinically present as paradoxical worsening of uh, the known condition or the paradoxical Irish or appearance of a new disease that is called unmasked Irish. This condition can be seen with severe immunodeficiency. There are lots of risk factors in HIV patient to get Irish. As I told you, the severe <coughs> immunodeficiency with CD polymorphemia, the extent of severity of opportunistic infection, the, then the getting high antigen load, <clears throat> HIV viral load before starting antiretroviral therapy. Again, the, um, the high antigenic load causing um, Irish. The Irish can present about two to 12 weeks after initiation of antiretroviral therapy. This condition mostly associated with systemic symptoms like general ill health, fever, malaise, joint pain. The common con condition, as far as skin concern, the, the Irish can be manifest as mycobacterium tuberculosis, as tuberculous lymphadenitis. This picture appreciates the way it's present, the uh, inflamed, enlarged erythematous superior nodes. If the focus neoformance is the other one, that also can present, um, present in same morphology. The diagnosis of this condition is um, purely clinical because there is no uniform diagnosed test to diagnose. This picture also again shows after starting antiretroviral therapy, the molluscum contagious. Uh, the most of the nation has fallen and um, have fallen and uh, the lesions around eyes become secondary infected, inflamed and causing swelling around this eyes. The diagnosis criteria are used and most of these criteria should be there to diagnose the Irish. The, the, some of them are HIV infection with low CD count before starting treatment antiretroviral therapy, positive virological and immunological response to antiretroviral therapy and so on. The differential diagnoses are to Irish drug reaction, that is the most important differential diagnosis and progression of opportunistic in infection and non adherent to the treatment that is very common in H HIV patients. It is as high as 40% and antimicrobial drug resistance. Again, this one is also very common. But how do you prevent this Irish? The best way to prevent the developing Irish is Initiation of antiretroviral therapy before the development of advanced stage. It should be late. There should be more than 100 
CD for lymphocytes count. Meantime, the aggressive effort should be made to detect asymptomatic mycobacterial and cryptococcal infections. These are causing um, the, the clinically present as IH. So I would like to conclude, cutaneous manifestations have a wider spectrum, which have a strong correlation with CD4 lymphocytes count and further modified by initiation of antiretroviral therapy, leaving physicians more challenges in diagnosis. The cutaneous manifestations can be initial presentation of the disease and can be associated with significant morbidity and mortality. So early diagnosis will allow appropriate treatment, prevention of the complication and transmission also improve quality of life. Although mortality from HIV have, has significantly reduced due to antiretroviral therapy, concurrent use of um, concurrent increasing adverse drug reaction um, can be seen. It is very important to have a prompt diagnosis of adverse cutaneous drug reductions from iris because the, as far as drug reaction is concerned, the isolation of offending drug is extremely important to prevent life-threatening um, reactions like toxic epidermal necrolysis. The other important thing is, it is important to continue antiretroviral therapy when patients found to have Irish while we manage Irish accordingly. Thank you very much for the kind attention. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Swarmadisanayake. I think we should be able to continue with the MCQ presentation now. Uh, the MCQs will be presented by Dr. Lalinda Karunaratna, Registrar in Thermatology. Uh, National Hospital Candy, over to you, Lalinda. Thank you very much, madam. So today we discuss about Discussion of MCQs and pictures. First one, recognize causes of hirsutism in group. Uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, porphyria, anabolic steroid intake, anorexia nervosa. When we see all of these conditions, all of these conditions causes increased body hair. So then we will differentiate what is hirsutism and what is hypertrichosis. Hypertrichosis is increased body hair in any part of the body and it is, uh, uh, can be terminal hair or villous hair. But in hirsutism, it is more specific term. Uh, here the male pattern uh, body hair, terminal body hair development in female patients. And it is mainly androgen dependent. So with that knowledge, uh, here also we can see that male pattern uh, here uh, like hair growth as well as male pattern hair growth, the uh, abdomen, the female patient. So with that knowledge, we uh, go back to the MCQ. So uh, here, as you know, polycystic ovary syndrome, there is a hyperandroidism, so that can cause hirsutism and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Uh, it also causes increased Androgen level causing hirsutism. Uh, in porphyria, there will be increased body hair, but it is not androgen dependent and it is uh, the hypertrichosis rather than hirsutism. And uh, anabolic instrument in there, uh, obvious, it is hyperandrogenism causing hirsutism. And in anorexia nervosa, also, uh, there is uh, increased body hair formation and it is not androgen dependent, so it is. The hypertrichosis rather than hirsutism. So, my uh, second question is regarding psoriasis. Pustular psoriasis is associated with hypercalcemia. Metabolic syndrome is associated with psoriasis. Next one, gut age psoriasis occurs after streptococcal throat infection. Uh, next one, nails are commonly involved in psoriatic arthritis. Distal ventricle injury during involvement is the most common manifestation of psoriatic arthritis. So when you see the things, uh, so vascular psoriasis is associated with hypocalcemia, not the hypercalcemia. So it's uh, false. And uh, metabolic syndrome is associated with psoriasis. So it's well known association. And uh, we know that metabolic syndrome and obesity uh, can uh, worsen the psoriasis skin manifestations. 
as well as the psoriasis also uh, it works in the uh, diseases associated with metabolic syndrome. And uh, gutted psoriasis occurs after stomachal throat infections. Gutted psoriasis is commonly occurring uh, among children, so it is uh, commonly occurs after stomachal throat infections. True. And nail are commonly known in psoriatic arthritis. That's true. Uh, we know that psoriasis have been, uh, is a uh, common nail changes, but in patients with psoriatic arthritis, they are more prone to get nail changes. And Distal integral injury joint involvement is the classic type of psoriatic arthritis, but it is not the common manifestation. Common manifestation of psoriatic arthritis is mono and oligoarthritis uh, causing dactylitis. So here you can appreciate the uh, uh, pustular psoriasis where we can see the uh, non follicular pustules. They police to form lakes of pus. And here actually it's a uh, severe psoriatic erythrodermic patient with uh, psoriatic arthritis with deformities. Uh, next one, which of these are true regarding leprosy? First one, hypopigmented patches are always anesthetic. Symmetrical sensory neuropathy is a non presentation. Pure neural leprosy patients do not have hypopigmented patches. Erythema nodosum leprosum is associated with fever, malaise, and joint pain. Reactions occur only after starting treatment. So we will go to the answer. So regarding malaise, hypopigment patches are not all less anesthetic. Uh, mainly in lepromatous pole, uh, there are multiple hypopigmented and copper patches. They are not anesthetic. And in lepromatous leprosy, main neurological uh, and as the sensory impairment is glove and stroking type sensory impairment. And as well as even in tuberculosis leprosy, uh, which occurs for the face, are not anesthetic because we know that face is having rich sensory nerve subtype. So uh, facial patches uh, are not anesthetic. And uh, symmetrical sensory neuropathy is a known presentation. As I mentioned, the patient will go to the uh, lepromatous pole, then they develop uh, sensory polyneuropathy. And in pure neural leprosy, uh, we can't uh, they, uh, we, uh, define pure neural leprosy patients having the nerve changes without having skin changes. So they don't have hypopigment patches. Erythema nodosum leprosum is a uh, type 2 uh, lepra reaction, uh, which is uh, associated with fever, malaise, and joint pain. So you know that in type 1 lepra reaction, there will be uh, inflammation of existing uh, leprosy plaques and uh, neuritis, but in the type 2 uh, lepra reaction, there will be pops of new lesions with constitutional symptoms. And uh, uh, reactions occur only after starting treatment. Reaction for occurs after starting treatment, as well as even before starting treatment, and uh, it can occur after completing treatment as well. So here you can appreciate lepromatous leprosy with multiple coppery color plaques in only the back. Here also patients with uh, uh, leprosy neuropathy. So you can appreciate the flow hand as well as there are multiple ulcers and blisters due to the uh, trauma and burn injury due to the sensory neuropathy. Next one. The skin manifestations of mycobacterial infections include lupus vulgaris, granuloma annulare, scrofuloderma, fish tank granuloma, erythema indurata. So, considering the skin manifestation of mycobacterial infections, uh, commonly, as you know, mycobacterial leprae causes so many cutaneous manifestations and mycobacterial tuberculosis also causes multiple cutaneous manifestations depend on the host immunity and the bacterial load. And there are other atypical mycobacteria also causes skin manifestation. So lupus vulgaris is common as a granulomatous uh, lesion. It's commonly occurring with mycobacterial tuberculosis. Granuloma annulare is not associated with mycobacterial infection. Uh, Scrofuloderm is uh, discharging, chronic discharging sinuses which can occur over the uh, lymph node and joints. 
which is manifestation of cutaneous fever. Cutaneous fever disease. And Pistan granuloma, it is uh, hyperkeratotic uh, lesions occur due to a mycobacterial malignum infection in atypical mycobacterial infection. Erythema endurata, erythema endurata is also a mycobacterial uh, tuberculosis infection. So, here you can appreciate the well defined erythematous plaques with lupus vulgaris. And here, uh, multiple erythematous nodules with uh, ulcerations and scarring in over the posterior aspect of the uh, arm in patient with, patients with erythema indurator. Uh, next one regarding scabies, it's uh, usually spread by casual contact. Barossa pathognomic of scabies. Norwegian scabies is the least infectious form. Facial lesions are commonly seen. Nodular lesions may persist after treatment. So, we need to ask us, uh, scabies is not spread with casual contact. So, with handshaking and casual contact, scabies is not transmitted, but it's commonly transmitted with the household and need a long term contact to transmit. Because a normal scabies patients has a less mite load. And then, Barossa pathognomic of scabies, Barossa the uh, linear term uh, with uh, lesions, which are pathognomic of scabies. Norwegian scabies is the least infectious form, it is the uh, most infectious form, no incidence of us in the immunocompromised patients and, and elderly patients. There are high number of mild load is there, so it's more infectious. And facial lesions are commonly seen, it's strong. Facial lesions are uh, not commonly occur in scabies because uh, in adult patients with sebum has antimicrotic effect, so uh, in adult patients they don't develop facial lesions. But in children also, uh, rarely they develop facial lesions. And nodular lesions may persist after treatment. That's true. Uh, nodular lesions uh, may persist even after treatment because of the persistence of uh, um, antigens in the skin. So here we can see the cement-like busted uh, lesions in the Norwegian scabies. And here, there's a scabic nodule even after complete the treatment for scabies. Next MCP is well known causes for oral genital ulceration. Resistance disease, pitch drug reduction, and foot mouth disease, Crohn's disease, Steven Johnson syndrome. So, as you know, Resistance disease is uh, uh, commonly associated with oral genital ulceration, recurrent abscesses, and genital ulcers. Pitch drug reduction also uh, is such predilection to the uh, mucous membranes. And it can occur over the skin as well. And for more disease, there can be mouth lesions. There are mouth lesions, but there are no any dental involved. Crohn's disease, we know there are multiple or uh, they are having oral ulcers as well as genital ulcers. And Steven Johnson syndrome is uh, characteristic for having the mucosal involvement with oral and genital ulcers. So here the patient with thick stuck eruption, you can appreciate the well demarcated uh, dusky red uh, color plaques. This, this can be just occur over the uh, lips, and there can be some bullous lesions also here. Patient with Steven Johnson syndrome with oral and is also. So, um, next MCQ is uh, regarding cutaneous leash connexis. Cutaneous leash connexis in, uh, in Sri Lanka is caused by Leishmania donovan. Vector is sand fly. Skin lesions are usually itchy. Cutaneous uh, leishman results in disfiguring scars. Photosensitivity is a known association. So, cutaneous leishman is generally caused by leishman donor. It's true. And, uh, but uh, in India also, there are other subtypes of leishman donor species causes the Kalahasa syndrome, the uh, systemic condition. But in Sri Lanka subtypes, they cause cutaneous leishman and vector is sanctified, that's true. Skin lesions are usually you know, the cutaneous lesions, skin lesions are asymptomatic, there are no itching, no pain. And uh, lesions results in disfiguring scars. So the lesions ulcers, they uh, result in disfiguring scars. That's why we have to 
start treatment early to prevent scar formation. And photosensitivity is a non association, that's true. Photosensitivity uh, can occur surrounding the leishmaniasis uh, lesions as well as a reported case of generalized photosensitivity in leishmaniasis. So, here you can appreciate the typical uh, leishmania lesion uh, with erythematous plastic center ulceration and plastic. Here, there's a large leishmania ulcer with surrounding photosensitivity you can appreciate. Then we will discuss a uh, few pictures. So my first picture is here. These three clinical features. So we we'll discuss the uh, first one here. We can appreciate there are uh, hypopigmented plaques with hyperpigmented border with central atrophic and white scale over the nose and ear, and there are an upper chest as well. So these lesions are suggestive of discoid lupus erythematosus. Is also having actinic chelitis. And next one is, I think you can appreciate is having uh, life atrophy due to the lupus paniculitis. Next uh, one is, uh, what's the diagnosis? And mention two causes. Here, I think you can appreciate a whitish to chalky color materials uh, deposited under the skin. So, this is calcinosis cutis. So, mentioned two causes uh, dermatomyositis as well as systemic sclerosis causes calcinosis cutis. And we can differentiate it with this in by uh, systemic sclerosis uh, developing more distal lesions, and in dermatomyositis, they are even more proximal calcinosis cutis lesions. And uh, my last picture what's the diagnosis? And this two associations. I think uh, here uh, we can appreciate multiple skin color plaques with thready border and without any scaling or without any epidermal changes. So it's characteristic of granuloma annulare. So here there are multiple lesions in all in the back. So this is generalized granuloma annular. So, and granuloma annular commonly occurs with uh, diabetes mellitus and with HIV infection. That's all. Thank you very much for giving me this valuable opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lalin de Karmaratne, uh, for that uh, excellent presentation on MCQs. And the next presentation will be by Dr. Chiranje Ekanayake. Over to you, Chiranjee. Thank you, madam. Uh, we are going to discuss about seven, uh, seven CQs as well as three for diagnosis. These are based on uh, common clinical uh, cases with people. Uh, so let's get started. This is my first MCQ. Dermatological manifestations of diabetes mellitus include first, necrobiasis lipotica, second, painful bleeding, three, third one, erythema nodosa, then articulus granulomatulare, and fifth one, that, uh, that delta. Okay, let's move. Dermatological manifestations of diabetes mellitus include first one, necrobiasis lipotica. Second one, painful bullet. Third one, erythema nodosum. And fourth one, diffuse granuloma annulare. And fifth one, di diabetic dermopathy. Here are the answers. Uh, diabetic uh, necrobiasis lipotica is true. Painful bullet is false. Erythema nodosum, which also false. And diffuse granuloma annulare, true. And diabetic dermopathy, also true. Which quickly, uh, I'm going to quickly explain about uh, this further. 0.3% of the patients with diabetes have necrobiasis lipotica. It can occur in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes as well. The thing is that 11 to 65% of patients with necrobiasis lipotica have diabetes or pre diabetes. So, the thing that we have to understand is that uh, not all patients with diabetes. In that necrobiasis lipotica, and also the, uh, that only 
glucose for the necrobasis lipodica is not diabetes. And uh, as we all know, diabetes associated with bullae, but with they are asymptomatic, not painful. And diffuse type can be associated with uh, granuloma annulare, considering granuloma annulare, it is associated with diabetes, which is with the diffuse type, not with the localized type. A diabetic dermopathy is the only pathognomonic cutaneous finding related to diabetes mellitus. The second MCQ. Causes of generalized pruritus include retroidal infection, primary biliary cirrhosis, polycythemia rubravira, chronic renal failure, and lymphocytes. Here are the answers. Uh, the retroidal infection is a cause for generalized pruritus. It's true. Primary biliary cirrhosis, also true. Polycythemia rubravira, true. Chronic renal failure, true. But leprosy is not the cause for generalized pruritus. Uh, in polycythemia rubravira, uh, we all know that uh, usually it's precipitated by contact with water, which came in as acrogenic pruritus. Uh, this is thought to be mediated by the effect of platelets, serotonin, and uh, prostaglandin. Uh, urine pruritus arises in patients undergoing dialysis is due to combination of cirrhosis, which means dry skin, and secondary hypothyroidism, peripheral neuropathy, and there are uh, some few causes as well. Uh, in uremic pruritus, once uh, chronic pruritus has occurred, there may be secondary changes in the nerves in the skin and central nervous system, which heighten the sensation of pitch. Cholestasis is thought to release a uh, toxic substance from the liver, which stimulate neural itch fibers in the skin, which cause for generalized pruritus. This is my third MCQ. Acquired ectasis is seen in lymphoma, leprosy, clopisomy therapy, malabsorption, and ectasis vulgaris. Here are my answers. All four states, they are true lymphoma, leprosy, clopisomy therapy, malabsorption, all four uh, acquired ectasis, but ectasis vulgaris is false because that uh, from the history, actually, we have to. Uh, clearly clarify that whether the, the patient is claiming that from C's birth or later developed one, because that uh, it is very important. There are, because there are some causes, that, uh, congenital causes, like such as ectasis vulgaris, excessive ectasis, lapilla ectasis, like things that we have to get uh, catch up with the history. And as well as with the examination, we can uh, get into a diagnosis by looking at the type of ectasis, such as in lamina ectasis, uh, there are clear characteristic feature of ectasis in lamina. In leprosy, sometimes uh, even uh, presenting manifestation may be only dry skin and ectasis, so it is very important. And clopisamine, uh, we know uh, that in multidrug treatment therapy in leprosy, it is a common cause for acquired ectasis. So when you see some patients in leprosy with multidrug treatment therapy, uh, the ectasis we can appreciate that it could be due to leprosy itself or due to clopisamine also. And acquired ectasis may present in paraneoplastic syndrome with an underlying cancer such as undiagnosed multiple myeloma. Fourth MCQ. Common causes for erythroderma in adults include psoriasis, retroidal infection, seborrheic dermatitis, Cutaneous leishmaniasis and lymphoma. Your answers. Psoriasis, true. Retroviral infection, also true. Seborrheic dermatitis, also a common cause of erythroderma in adults, is true. Cutaneous leishmaniasis, false. And lymphoma, again, it is true. Uh, you all know, I think, that exoliative dermatitis is a definitive term that refers to scaling erythematous dermatitis involving more than 90% of more of the cutaneous surface. That is the key thing that we have to uh, identify because the surface area should be good to be more, more than 90%. And exfoliated dermatitis is characterized by erythema and scaling involving the skin surface and uh, open obscures the primary lesion that may, that are important clues to understanding the evolution of the disease. So that uh, actually that in this case scenarios that we have to identify what is the positive factor 
factor of both that takes only two dermatitis. So fifth time, cutaneous disease uh, due to effect of bacterial toxin uh, include what you listen, staphylococcal scolded skin syndrome, scarlet fever, toxic shock syndrome, and cellulitis. Staphylococcal scolded syndrome, scarlet fever, and uh, toxic shock syndrome, both are caused by bacterial toxins. You know that, but what you listen, it is yes, it is caused that uh, it is. It's some toxins, but it's not post cutaneous manifestations. Cellulitis, of course, there are skin manifestations, but not due to toxins. The mechanism of action in uh, in those toxin mediated blockage of neuromuscular transmission in pointed. This is I'm uh, getting regarding the cortisol. Uh, this is uh, accomplished by either inhibiting acetylcholine release at the presynaptic tract of the myoneural junction, or by binding acetylcholine itself. Yeah, and actually, it's not caused in many stages. Sixth one, sixth density. Disorders associated with vitiligo, hypothyroidism, diabetes mellitus, tuberous sclerosis, alopecia areata, myasthenia gravis. Yes, uh, hypothyroidism is true, diabetes mellitus true, the tuberous sclerosis is false, alopecia areata true, myasthenia gravis it is true. Key message I want to clear the disorders, such as uh, most of the autoimmune disorders, are linked with MTD, such as Hashimoto thyroiditis, Graves disease, Addison's disease, diabetes, alopecia areata, pernicious anemia, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, and so on. In tuberous sclerosis, of course, there is a uh, hypopigmented uh, patches, but these are not vitiligo, these are ash leaf matrix. And also, it is not. Uh, Linked with autoimmune disorders. My seventh and last final MCQ uh, regarding severic dermatitis. Resistant cases occur in HIV patients, common in adult females. Skin extensors more commonly affect. Uh, positive role by malassezia purple. When skin textures involved has to be treated with potent topical steroids. Let's move on to answers. Yes, resistant cases occur in HIV patients, too. And common in adult females, those in adults, uh, mostly that uh, in males are more prone to get seborrheic dermatitis. Skin extensors more commonly affect that also holds. Positive role uh, by malassezia purple it is true. And when skin flexures in both has to be treated with cotton topical skin, that is absolutely false because that we know that uh, skin temperatures, uh, these are severely sensitive areas. We can't use potent topical steroids straight away. We have to start with a mild steroid uh, with, uh, regarding uh, skin infections and also face, gentle areas, and also in, in, in children, we have to use uh, mild to moderate steroid. Okay, let's move on to three. Uh, I have a uh, three spot diagnosis. Uh, I tell you a little bit about this patient, an old lady uh, came with sudden on blisters or I thigh, which is unilateral. No recent contact of anything on that particular area. So, what is the diagnosis? I think you can tell it. It is a herpes zoster on right thigh. Uh, our madam, Dr. Uh, Swaradis, and I could also clearly uh, tell uh, told about this thing. Uh, it's uh, at the lecture. Uh, because that uh, we know that multidermatomal uh, involvement and severe nature and also varicose nature, we can appreciate in a patients with HIV patient with regarding to uh, this sustained infection. But actually, this patient, this uh, what I showed in here, uh, is not a patient with uh, HIV. This is an old lady came with uh, this sustained infection. So this is the second one. A uh, two-year-old uh, baby boy presented with uh, itchy lesion for three months duration. Otherwise, the baby is well. Uh, so what is the diagnosis and what is the cutaneous sign we can elicit here? Okay, the history of uh, itching, we have to uh, trigger something in your mind, I think. And also the uh, small child, this is a bacteria pigmentosa. Uh, so, you, as you all know, that uh, 
due to that, uh, we can clearly uh, elicit that sign when we rub on that the particular area, that hyperpigmented area, it will get more prominent. So we can use various sign. Okay, my last final uh, spot diagnosis. That 70 year old lady presented with generalized thickening and hyperpigmentation of skin. What is the diagnosis and what are associated conditions? Yes, actually, this is um, even this picture looks like a, a male adult, but it's a lady or lady. Uh, this patient, uh, uh, it's a diagnosed patient with metallic skin. So, this picture you can appreciate the symmetrical, well thickening, hyperpigmented thickening of the uh, face as well as a, a low uh, limbs and palms. So, this is acanthosis nigricus, malignant acanthosis nigricus with tri palm appearance. So, in this kind of patients, we have to look for internal malignancy because this is a common paranoplast representation of this kind of patient. So, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for the association to give me this valuable lecture. Thank you again. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chirancha Eknaike. Again, uh, for a, uh, a very informative type of uh, MCQs. Uh, if we could take up the questions also, that's there in the uh, chat with uh, the team. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, this question is to Dr. Swarna Disanayake. Madam, may I know how is the plasma present in HIV patient? It's a big question. I mean, is there? Sorry, may I know how? We, huh? May I know how histoplasma present in HIV patient? Surely, the histoplasma present in HIV patients at last stage, that, that is an opportunist, as an opportunistic infection, and it is a fungal infection and can be present as the, the morphological similar, morphological lesions similar to molluscum contact use. The skin lesions are, looks like molluscum. And usually diagnosis is done by the fungal studies or PCR or biopsy. All right. The, uh, how does malignancy cause acanthosis nigricans? How does it cause? Actually, yes. the, the cause is unknown. Uh, the, the, I think the, the it is thought that uh, the, they stimulate the, some cytokines stimulate keratinocytes for proliferation. Is the thought the thought to be uh, the fact at the moment? It is not completely uh, known. Right. Okay. Uh, the uh, what are the skin conditions which manifest as iris? The skin conditions, usually the commonest one is uh, the mycobacterial infections, uh, as I told you in the lecture, and it can be present as uh, the mycobacterial lymphadenitis, as separative, angry-looking, um, enlarged nodes in uh, the usually on neck and um, the other areas where we can see the lymph nodes. And cryptococcus neoformans also can present like the same picture. Again, uh, the anything in the skin, if it is the, the in Irish can be the, the, anything in the skin can present as uh, the exaggerated immune response. The Irish is somewhat similar to the reactions occur in leprosy. The, in leprosy also we have the lepra reactions. The like in Irish also, that kind of reaction usually in HIV it is known as Irish. Uh, can HIV detect by serology within two weeks of HIV infection? I the think I... Usually it is mainly due to, and the, can be detected uh, the definitely due to 
a P24 antigen. Uh -huh. And the, we have a window period during this time, antibody not, uh, the, the, they, they don't have significant level of antibodies to detect at that stage. All right. The, um, how long retroviral therapy continue to prevent HIV infection in an individual soon after sexual contact or blood contact with an infected patient? It, it, it is uh, a STD person's uh, question. Yeah, so then, sorry, I don't know. We'll skip that. We'll skip that. Uh, do we have anyone in the audience from sexually transmitted? Maybe that you could raise the hand. If there's anyone, how long it retroviral therapy continue to prevent HIV infection in an individual soon after sexual contact or blood contact with an infected patient? Uh, the question is, uh, in uh, Nikoski sign, characteristic for, characteristic for 10. Is Nikoski sign characteristic for 10? Uh, we can appreciate Nikoski sign in the uh, structural status syndrome as well as toxic epidermal necrosis. So in our patient, uh, it was positive as in, uh, toxic epidermal necrosis. And uh, we can appreciate in several other conditions as well. Uh, so in the clinical assessment, we can differentiate uh, those conditions. In the system, we expect uh, full thickness epidermal detachment. So we can see a pink uh, background on the uh, detached surface. And in the scapular status syndrome, it proper epidermal detachment, so we may be able to see a brownish color rather than pinkish color. Right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sashika. Uh, so uh, that brings to an end for this uh, excellent, informative, interactive uh, um, presentation that was uh, organized by Shonaka Medical Association in collaboration with the College of uh, uh, Dermatologists. It was an excellent uh, program. Uh, so uh, let me thank Dr. Swarnadisanayake, Consultant Dermatologist, National Hospital Candy, Dr. Shashik Chandratna, Senior Registrar in Dermatology, National Hospital Candy, and the MCQ presentations were done by Dr. Lalinda Karunaratna and Dr. Chiranya Ekanayake. I uh, very much uh, appreciate your contribution and uh, here in Colombo that if you were in person, this is the time that we award you with certificates. Uh, so maybe that we should be able to send our your certificates, I think, uh, because uh, uh, generally, uh, if otherwise, uh, we uh, appreciate your uh, contribution uh, for continuous professional development by awarding you uh, with the certificate that is uh, given by the association. Uh, so uh, let me thank all who stayed uh, until uh, the uh, uh, end of the uh, uh, clinical session. Uh, thank you for all for uh, asking questions and for patient attention. Thank Madam, you. Madam, can, yes. can, can I just interrupt for a moment? I'm can sorry. This? Yes, this is Aria. I'm just trying to respond to the question raised earlier on because of the technological issues. I couldn't respond immediately. I think yes. someone asked about uh, the use of antiretrovirals uh, as prophylaxis after exposure, the recommendation is 48 hours, but people do uh, provide them up to five, five days after exposure. Thank you. Uh, and Madam, it, is, it has to be continued up to 28 days if they start the post-exposure prophylaxis after an exposure. Right, right. Thank you very much. Thank you for both of you for that contribution. Thank you for all joining and for patient attention. Thank you.